Hi, I'm Martin from Lesco Electronics, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can program your own transmitters, which is going to cover several systems. Um, with me, I found two. These are two old ones. They bring back memories just looking at them. But when I did look at them and I looked at the back of the transmitters, I also noticed that they have the same FCC code as so many other remotes that I have in my warehouse. So many of them, it kind of unlocked a lot of information from myself because I sell transmitters for a living. So it's good for me to know. I'm sure it's even more better for you to know so that way you can actually program your remotes should you lose one, break one, whatever the case is. Okay, so what I'm going to cover is this brand, which is very old, Magnum. Okay, Magnum was one. This manufacturer created several models, just named differently, boxed up differently. As you can see, Impulse, which is imported by a distributor out in California. I don't believe they even do them anymore. Same exact product. They had several lines, some were keyless entry only, some were alarm keyless combos, some were remote starters and keyless, some were alarm remote starters, as well as keyless entries. All the same, the transmitters are the same. Uh, some were two buttons, there were some three buttons, four buttons around as well. Um, with this system, which in particular, I'm um, using that Magnum system. The module will look kind of like this. This is very typical of these transmitters. Big, big plugs, no external, re you know, external relay packs or small modules or anything. These things were just real big. They look like so many systems. And I never really understood exactly how to program most of these systems. Now I do. I actually used to know, but I forgot because I got out of the actual installation end of it and I just went to the online and I really had no need for the information. Somehow things get lost. Um, but now I have the manual. So that, re that remote system is the same for those two systems. I also located some other transmitters from the back of my warehouse and I wanted to show you some of them. This one here. It's a two-button version. All these remotes, by the way, share one same quality, which is on the back, the FCC number. I don't know if this is going to show up as good as my camera is, and technology as I seriously doubt it. So the number that we're working with is J552351AT1, or J552351AT1, same difference. Okay, like I said, there's two button versions. Um, this one here is just a no-name, generic kind of one. Probably the most of these are around than anything else. This is a TRC, an ICD, and this is an old Harada. So I'm going to show you how you can program these systems. Okay, so to actually do the programming, there's only two things you need, well actually three. One being the remote control, whichever one it is that you're using, doesn't really matter. All of them you'll, of course, have, um, you know, a lock, an unlock button, an option button. Um, for this scenario, what I want to do, just because it'll be the most complicated of the situations, the scenarios that someone might come across when they're doing their programming, is I'm going to show you how to program a three and a four button transmitter this time. Okay? Um, you're going to need to locate this, and this is the... Question I get asked every day, like 20 times a day, so don't even bother. You need to know where your valley switch is, okay? You're not going to see all this wire and stuff. This is what you're going to see. It's just a single momentary push button type of switch, okay? Typically, most guys will install this underneath this driver's dash or in the kick panel area. If you don't know what a kick panel area is, simply what it is is when you're sitting in your vehicle, if you take your left leg and slap it in the left corner, that piece of plastic that's around that area, a lot of times the guy will put that in there facing, you know, horizontally. It could be this way underneath the dash into a piece of plastic. It could be in several locations. It's your job to find it. Okay, most of them will actually terminate with this blue plug. The plug may actually vary in color. Most of them are blue. And the way it goes is it plugs right into this alarm system like that. I'm sorry. And then it'll run out to wherever it's mounted. Okay, so the valley switch you need is also called a programming switch. 
That's why I spent so much emphasizing talking about it because this, without this, you can't program it. If by any chance you don't have a valley switch, what you could do is just jump it out with a piece of metal, any type of metallic object, piece of wire, a coin, um, anything, really. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so the programming sequence goes as such. To program these transmitters, you can program up to four per system, by the way. So if you have one that's broken, you want it to add one, you would just reprogram yours at the same time as the other one. So one sequentially, the very next one at the same time. So if you get in your car, program the one, turn the key off, the other one's going to lose programming because you didn't do them together. It's very important to do them together. Okay, so get in the vehicle, you're going to take your key, turn it to the ignition position, turn it on, off, on, off, on, leave it on. At that point, the lights in your vehicle should flash. Okay, leave the key on. Then you're going to grab your valley switch, hold it down for five seconds. Now the, flat, the lights are going to flash again. Then all you're going to do is grab your transmitter, hold down the lock button. It'll confirm usually with a chirp or a light flash. Some of them maybe won't, but that's how it's done. Same thing on my second remote. Third remote, I'm just going to do all four. I told you I'll get two, but I'm going to do four. There's a four button. I'm holding down the lock button. Typically, you have about 15 seconds of a window to do this in. The alarm is not going to wait all day for you. You have to get in there and move it. You have to turn the key on, off, on, off, on. Leave it on. Valley switch. Hold five seconds. Wait for the click or the chirp or the lights, whatever it's going to do in your system. After that, you have 15 seconds. Grab your remote. Lock. Lock. However many you sit, you have to exit programming, just simply turn the key off. That's all you have to do, or you can just leave it alone and let the time elapse for 15 seconds, and it'll time out all by itself. And that's how you program these systems. So if you have anyone with that remote, I know this this video is going to be very popular with a lot of people because there's a lot of these things out there. Um, that's all you have to do to program these transmitters. Hope it helps you.